and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving leak code problem 489, Robot Room Cleaner. Before we do, I would just like to kindly ask you to subscribe. This channel is growing quickly and I need your support to grow it even bigger. That way I can make more videos and reach more people and help them with their leak code goals. So please subscribe to the channel, it really helps me grow. Okay, let's read the question prompt. You are controlling a robot that is located somewhere in a room. The room is modeled as an M by N binary grid where zero represents a wall and one represents an empty slot. The robot starts at an unknown location in the room, but it is guaranteed to be empty and you do not have access to the grid, but you can move the robot using the given API robot. You are tasked to use the robot to clean the entire room, i.e. clean every empty cell in the room. The robot with the four APIs can move forward, turn left, or turn right. Each turn is 90 degrees. When the robot tries to move into a wall cell, its bumper sensor detects the obstacle and it stays on the current cell. Design an algorithm to clean the entire room using the following APIs. So we have this robot class and it has a Boolean move uh, method. And this returns true if the next cell is open and the robot moves into the cell and it's gonna return false if the next cell is an obstacle and the robot will stay in its current cell. The robot also has a turn left and turn right method which basically will turn the robot 90 degrees but it's going to stay in the same cell and it's going to be facing a new direction and we're going to have a clean method which just cleans the current cell so let's look at an actual example and think about how we might solve this because it's a little bit confusing when you read the question prompt and you're trying to piece together what you need to do so we read the question prompt but it was a little unclear how we actually solve this so let's look at the example that lead code gives us and essentially, we are given this grid where the white tiles here are going to represent empty spaces that we need to clean. The red tiles are going to be walls, which we can't go into. And this is going to be our robot. And it's going to be at some starting position in the grid. And essentially, what we need to do is we need to clean this entire um, grid here. So the robot needs to travel to like all the white tiles and basically call the clean method when we get to that tile. And then once we've cleaned all the methods, we're basically done. So if you've seen you know, questions like this, you'll realize that this is a depth first search question because we have you know, some starting position and we need to explore all possible paths that we can and visit all the possible tiles. And you know, typically the way that we do this is with a breadth first search and you know some sort of backtracking because we need to like go to a certain tile once we hit a dead end then we need to backtrack to a tile that's valid and then go another way we hit a dead end backtrack go we hit a dead end backtrack go back so this is going to set the basically the foundation of how we want to solve it the problem with this question is that we're not actually given the grid we're just given this robot api we don't actually know the size of the grid we don't know our current position in the grid all we know is what the you know apis are which remember we can turn left we can go right we can uh clean a room or we can basically um you know move the robot right and the robot will either move it into that cell that it's facing if we can move there or it's not going to move if we can't so for example if it's facing forward and we ask it to move from here it can but then if we're now here and we try to go up it won't because it's going to hit the boundary of our matrix so it's just going to return false but we don't have any of this information available to us so we have to be a little bit clever on how we do this and we're still going to want to maintain a visited set as we kind of go through our iteration here and we just want to set this up in you know a backtracking manner so basically from wherever our robot is we want to go in all four directions and explore all the possible tiles and then from there obviously it's a depth first search so we're going to try to go in all possible four directions assuming that we haven't already been there and then as soon as we hit a dead end we need to go back to the last valid position and then basically backtrack more if we can't go from there um, because maybe the other side has already been visited so trying to talk through this with the example when you know we don't actually have the positions of the robot available to us we don't know what the grid is is a little bit complicated i think the best thing for us to do now would actually be go to the code editor where we'll write out the code and i'll walk you through it line by line how we do it and explain the logic behind it because it's not too complicated like i said if you've done a depth first search before it's going to be the same setup it's just a little bit trickier now that we don't have the actual 
you know grid exposed to us we just have this robot api so it's a little bit uh more difficult but nothing too hard so let's go to the code editor and actually type this out okay we're in the code editor let's write the code so the first thing that we want to do which is pretty similar to basically any of these kind of depth first search or breadth first search through a grid problems is we need to set up the four directions that we can travel and we'll do that real quick so let's define our directions array and we'll say minus one zero so this is going to be that and then we have one zero and zero minus one so in this problem the directions that we want we actually want to keep it consistent and we don't want to just slap any random directions into our uh, array here we want to do it in a specific order we want to be going up first then right then down and then left and we just need to keep it consistent um, because that's the direction that we're going to want to travel if you kind of screw this up you'll actually get a wrong answer because your robot won't backtrack correctly so we want to go up right down and left and the reason that we want to do this is because we want to go clockwise um, if you mess up the actual direction that robot travels when you try to backtrack um, because we actually have to turn the robot you know 90 degrees to go back into a direction if you're turning the robot 90 degrees but you're not actually going clockwise or if you want to do it counterclockwise that's fine as well but if you just do it in a random order that's not either clockwise or counterclockwise because the robot moves 90 degrees each time you're going to get some weird messed up uh, movement of the robot so you need to make sure it's either clockwise or counterclockwise this way we're going clockwise so this represents going up this represents going right this represents going down and this represents going left so do keep note of that because this is an important part of the problem you're going to get the wrong answer if you don't do that so now we need a visited set and we're going to define this to make sure that we don't accidentally get caught in some sort of infinite cycle or we're trying to clean rooms that we've already cleaned now you may be wondering wait how are we going to get a visited set with coordinates if there are no coordinates available to us right we just have this robot and the robot has a move class uh, sorry a move method it has a turn left and a turn right method and a clean there's no actual coordinates well we can just pretend that our current coordinate wherever we're at when we start can be considered as coordinate zero zero and then we can just kind of normalize our you know matrix to be to pretend that we're just centered there and we can just go from there you know it may not actually be zero zero in the real world you know if you were to actually draw out the grid but we need some way to standardize where we are and we'll just pretend uh, that we have those coordinates available to us and this way we can actually keep track of where we are so we need that visited set now let's define a function to help us do the backtracking remember that once we hit an obstacle or a wall or maybe we come up up uh, against the boundary of our cell uh, you know for example like if we're out here if we try if we're in this tile and we try to move up obviously that's outside the bounds so our move method was going to return false if we try to move up we need some way to actually backtrack so how do we backtrack from where we are well what we need to do is if we were going forward to go back we need to turn 90 degrees twice obviously that's going to turn us 180 degrees which is going to flip our direction of travel then we need to move forward and then we want to reset our robot to always be basically looking straight so basically always looking up that way we'll have a consistent movement pattern and we don't have to worry about oh is our robot looking right is it looking left and all that stuff uh, we don't want to mess that up so what we're going to do is we're going to define a little helper function called go back so we're going to say def go back and what this helper function is going to do is just going to take the robot so we're going to say robot dot turn right and then we're going to do that twice so if we turn right twice remember that each right turn is 90 degrees so if we turn right twice that's going to be 180 degrees and we'll basically have reversed our direction then what we want to do is now that we've reversed our direction we just want to say robot.move so it's going to move forward and then we want to basically since our direction of travel is now down again we want to bring it back to being point, pointing forward or whatever the direction was when we started this we just want to reset it to the direction that we were moving when we actually started at this point so we want to say robot oops robot dot turn right and we'll say robot dot turn right so basically we have undone the right turns up here by just going in the circle 
uh, and doing another 180 degrees around. So that is your go back method. So that's just basically how when we hit an obstacle, we're actually going to backtrack. Now what we want to do is actually define the backtracking function. So we're going to say backtrack and we're going to take our current X coordinate, our current Y coordinate and the current direction of our travel, right? We could be pointing, you know, up, we could be pointing right, we could be pointing down, we could be pointing left, right? You know, so we need to know that because that will affect how we actually move. So what we're going to do is once we visit a tile, we're going to say visit, we're going to say visited, we're going to add that tile to our, you know, visited set to indicate that the robot has been there. And we're also going to clean the current tile. So we're going to say robot.clean and that's going to clean our current tile. Now what we need to do is we need to basically go in all four directions and then it's a depth first search. So we're going to try to explore all possible um, paths from you know the next paths that we can go. So remember that we can travel in four directions. So we're going to say for i in range four. What we're going to do is we're going to say that the new direction is going to equal to direction. So this is our old direction plus i modulo four. So this is a little bit confusing the first time you see it, but let's think about it. So zero represents, oops, zero represents, remember it's going up. So zero is up. Actually, let's write this in comments. So this doesn't affect our execution here. We'll say, okay. So zero represents going up one, because remember the first index in our directions represents what? represents going right two oops two is going to represent going down three represents going left so let's just say our original direction was zero which means that we're going up so what are the four directions we can go in right we can go up we can go right we can go down and we can go left so the way that we're going to get the new direction is if the current direction is zero, what happens if we add zero to it, right? For I in range four, that's going to give us the numbers zero, one, two, three. So zero plus zero is obviously still zero. And then zero modulo four is still going to be zero. So from our path, right, we can move up, which is one of the valid things. What is zero plus one? Well, that's going to be one modulo four, which is just one. So this is the going right. And then we have the same thing for the two and two and, you know, same thing for the down and the left. And that's how we get our new direction. OK, but what if we have something like our current direction is three and then we want to move to the left, right? Three plus three is going to be what? Uh, six. So six modulo four is going to be two. So, you know, that's how we're going to get all those things. So that's why we have the modulo, because we could have over, you know, our four elements here, um, you know, right, our current direction, plus we add the next direction we want to travel. But this sum can actually be greater than zero to three, which is our, you know, indices of the actual direction. That's how we get our next X uh, modification and our next Y modification. Uh, and the, that's why we need to modulo by four to make sure that we're always within zero, one, two, three, four. Otherwise, you know, we'd get six and then try to access the sixth index in directions and we'd blow up there. So that's kind of why we do that. If this doesn't make sense, maybe play around with it a little bit and hopefully it should click for you. Uh, this is pretty essential to this problem. So now that we get the new direction, this new direction is going to represent the index of which we need to pull out of this directions array. So we're going to say that the new X is going to be our old X plus whatever directions of new direction right? This is the index that we want to extract from. And remember that the X coordinate is going to be the zeroth index of our tuple here. So it's going to be zero. And then the new Y is going to be the old Y plus, uh, plus directions of new direction and one, right? Because the, the first index in the tuple is always the Y coordinate. And that's how we get the new X and the new Y. And now what we want to do is as long as we haven't already been to this new X, new Y coordinate, then we actually want to move there and, you know, basically kick off our backtrack again. So we're going to say if new X, new Y, not in visited. So if we haven't been there before and we're actually allowed to move there, remember that the robot will not be able to, well, it's going to return false if 
you call robot.move and you try to go in that direction. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say backtrack. So as long as we're, we haven't visited and we can actually move the robot, we're gonna say, we're gonna call backtrack with our new X, our new Y, and the new direction that we wanna be pointing. So that is where we pass in the new direction. And then after we have explored this with the backtrack, remember that we need to basically undo what we just did. So we need to go back, which is, you know, cleaning up our depth first search. So we call the go back function. And then what we want to do is remember that each time we go through our uh, loop here, we're essentially changing the direction of travel. So what we need to do is just turn the robot um, 90 degrees each time to make sure that everything is aligned. So for each time we go through this loop here, we, you know, we first start by the robot is pointing up, then we want to point right, then point down, then point left. And remember, that's why we have to have the direction set up in the way that we do. So that way that because we're turning the robot 90 degrees each time, if this was not in clockwise order, then we would mess up the actual turning of the robot and you get the wrong answer. So we need to make sure that um, this is in clockwise or counterclockwise, but you'd have to use turn left here. But that's a different story. Better to just stick with turn right because uh, that's what we've used here. No need to confuse yourself. So that is the actual backtrack function. Um, and now all we need to do is simply call, oops, call backtrack. Uh, remember our initial coordinates is gonna be zero, zero, or at least we're just gonna pretend that it's zero, zero. It may not actually be here. It's you know somewhere random, but we're just gonna pretend that this tile here is zero, zero. We're just gonna pretend that this is the origin. And uh, our direction of travel initially is going to be up. So let's run this, make sure we haven't made any bugs just in case. Okay, cool. So it seems like it's working and it does. So what is the time and space complexity for this algorithm? Well, let's look at the diagram and think about this. If this grid has N tiles in it, that means that the number of rooms we need to visit is going to be big O of N, but we know that there can be some obstacles. So if we say that, uh, let's just say, um, n equals number of tiles in matrix or in the room we'll say that m equals to number of obstacles right will be the number of obstacles so that means that our time complexity we basically need to visit all n tiles but since some of them are walls and we can't actually go there we're just going to subtract the number of obstacles we have and that's the number of tiles that our robot needs to visit so that's gonna be our time complexity because that's how many um, tiles we need to visit. What about the space complexity? Well, we know that for each tile, we need to store whether we've been there, which means that we're gonna be storing the position of N minus M tiles, because again, we only store tiles that have actually been visited. We don't care about walls. We don't store them in the visited set. So that means that our visited set is gonna have at most N minus M elements inside of it. And that's going to be your time and space complexity for this algorithm. So that is how you solve robot room cleaner. Like I said, it does follow the familiar depth first search pattern that you see in a lot of leak code questions with like a binary matrix or some sort of grid. Um, but it's a little bit different because in this case, we don't actually have the grid given to us. We have to basically work with like a virtual grid, you know, quote unquote. Uh, and we need to keep track of our positions and the, the trick here is kind of just You know how to actually move the robot and do the backtracking when you don't actually know the coordinates It's a little bit tricky uh, and I guess that's why this question is a hard whereas other ones are usually, you know Mediums, but not too bad. I think it's pretty straightforward how you actually solve it You know, even if you don't really understand this one too well I think it's one that if you've done a few DFS's you can get wrap your head around and you know worse comes to worse like this isn't the most crazy solution if you had to memorize it for an interview uh, and you could probably talk your way through it even if you don't actually understand some of the intricacies or don't understand how to derive it uh, on your own. I mean, most of the time you're not going to understand the intuition behind it. You kind of just see the solution and then understand how it works. So it's not a big deal. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling here. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and a comment. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. If there's more videos you want to see, just leave them in the comment section below. I'll be happy to get back to you guys. Otherwise, please subscribe to the channel so I can continue to grow. And thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day.